air. The question is, are you willing to stand with it and stand as it and stand for it? That's the question. That is the question that is being proposed. So we call out the real in our, in our nation. Those who are not talkers, but are true spiritual walkers. Who are fortified and embody the spiritual power and the proficiency and the discipline. We don't want the crybabies. We don't want the weak hearts. We call forth those that are real and those that are strong, those that are fearless. If you want to live a nice, pretty life where well, you ain't got to worry about nothing, this is not the place for you. But if you love to worry about the right things, when I say worry, I mean concern yourself with the significant things that are important to the liberation of our people. This is the place for you. Some people would like to not even worry about the significant things that are relevant and relative to changing the condition of our people. They don't even want those worries. That's why they don't want to be a revolutionary. Because they want to live without those concerns. And they're happy. They say, you know, that's what a happy life is. Not having to worry about nobody but myself. And feeling safe in that non-worry about others. That's what they consider to be happy. Happiness is selfishness. Mm. And individualism. This is what happiness is for them. For the black supremacists, happiness is victory over the oppressors. Happy, happiness is moment to moment victory over white supremacy. That's what happiness looks like. Happiness is what those victories look like. And the progress, the constant progression in our victoriousness as black supremacists. That's what happiness is for us. If your happiness is only the peace of mind you get from being situated in white supremacy, then look at yourself and know why our people are in the condition that they are in. Look at yourself and realize that. Because you are happy not having to be concerned or worried about the forces that are against the people. You're happy and satisfied with a life not having to deal with any of that. And you wonder why it is still going on. Or anyone else but yourself. It's a fact. You at peace knowing that I'm okay. Right. No matter what's happening to the people. And the neighbor is too. Our spiritual power is to bring down the demonic forces of white supremacy that are against our people. Bottom line. And we intend to do so. We will be successful. And that is not an objective to be reached. Because in doing so, that is nirvana. That is heaven being situated in the process of doing so. Mm -hmm. We think the kingliness and queenliness that we're going to reach is some place that we can sit on big handmade floor pillows for the rest of our life. We can sit on satin and silk floor pillows forever. Never worried about anything. Now you're a queen. Huh? We done, we, the, the, the idea of being a king and queen 
we have got from a children's cartoon. Disney World. Being a king and queen is being able to win, to responsibly win the victories. To, to constantly take on the victories against those destructive forces that are against the people. So our definition of what a king and queen is, is a self centered, selfish, individualistic, right? Self-aggrandizing individual. That's our idea of a king and queen. But in Asian movies, the emperor had the sword and fought on the front line. Am I correct? Right. Even the emperor. <coughs> huh? The emperor <coughs> himself. That's right. Our king and queen in a conscious community don't do nothing but sit and eat organic food all day. Huh? They ain't got to stand against anything. We got to do nothing. We're good. What the fuck type of king and queen are you? The king and queen is a responsible position, one of great responsibility for the masses of our people. And the willingness to move into that responsibility is the true aspiration of a king and a queen. What we call in the king and queen are costume parties. Huh? Wardrobe. They're costume parties. Halloween party. Halloween it never ends. Huh? That's great. Every day. It never ends. Another Halloween party. I'm black today. <laughs> I'm an African today. Hmm? I'm spiritual today. I'm going to be spiritual for Halloween. Every day. But you can take your dajiki off and pick up your sword. Huh? Your true battle costume is the bare chest that is ready to confront our enemies. Huh? I'm teaching today. So we have a conscious community of weak hearted. of weak-hearted people that are afraid to stand up and fight. But the black supremacists are the strong-hearted part that are standing up and winning. And you can tell those from false, from those who are real, from those that are standing up to fight. We don't want to just create our own little safe community somewhere where no one's bothering us. We want to bang on this white supremacist beast daily. That's what we want to do. We want to crush white supremacy for all African people around the world. We don't just want a community. A potluck. I'm lucky if she cooked today. I'm lucky if he, if he cooked. Potluck. Huh? We don't need luck. The purpose of our, the black supremacists is to crush white supremacy for all African people all around the world. That's what we want. And if we become a community, it's because we are a community of people that are doing that. If we're not doing that, then what is the purpose of our doings? Anything that we're doing as black people that is leading towards greatness will be short-lived if, if we don't have the ability to crush white supremacy because everything great that black people have ever done has only be dis been destroyed by basically one factor white supremacy 
Look at every great nation and everything that we've had. The monuments in Egypt. Look at the nose of the Sphinx. Look at every divine thing that we have ever built. Who messed it up? They say Napoleon blew the nose off him. Every great civilization that we have, what happened to it? So what determines the effectiveness of a civilization? What have we learned? That we are only going to survive and stand based on our ability to crush white supremacy. All history should tell you that. All of our greatness is a product of history only because of one reason. It's inability to crush white supremacy. Turned it into a historical fact. It turned into something to be in a museum. It is not going on today. Why? Because of white supremacy. So our greatness will be seen in our ability Sango. to destroy our enemy. What's do with the ships? This is a reality. White supremacy is ended. Because of us. Because we're here. So we are attracting. As soon as you say you are black supremacist and you stand on that you will begin to attract situations and circumstances that will shape and mold you into being who you say you are. And those challenges are no reason. Those challenges are no reason to step off the path. They're every reason to continue your training through your circumstances. And becoming 100% wholehearted of black supremacists. The challenges that we have undergone have showed us how perfect we are. We didn't know how perfect we are until we had victory over white supremacy. Our perfection was seen. And we will continue to be perfect. And if you want the real, you want that which is enduring. And if it ain't went through nothing, you don't know how enduring it is. You can tell how good something is and how durable it is by how much it went through. That's the reality. Mm. And if it ain't go through nothing, and if it's afraid to go through anything, then you know you can't count on it or depend on it. It's not real. It's not real. It's not something we can use. That's a fact. We awake all challenges. We embrace all challenges. And we will have victory over them all. Each and every single one of them. And the right challenges must occur for the right victories. If you're running down the court with the ball and you're on your other side of your court, you know you on how you know you're on the other side of the court is because when the defenders come out, you know you must be on the other side. But that also means what? You're closer to the rim that you want to hit to. The more the defense, their defense come out, the closer you are to the rim where you can just go ahead and dunk. The black supremacists are about to dunk. Literally. And it's a no look dunk. Because we knew where we were headed when we ran down court. We'd be ne weak, weak Negroes. At a time of challenge, of which the challenges that black supremacy are undergoing is when you should be willing to give your most support. It's when you should be willing to step up the most. Weak Negroes stepped back because they was afraid of stepping forward anyway. 
They doubted stepping forward anyway. Strong people push harder forward. That's like a woman having a child. She's at the most painful part of the birth. And she needs one more push. If she didn't have the energy to give that push, then the child goes back into the womb. Right. Or the womb crushes the child's head. Huh? Strong woman. So it's when you're at the most challenging point, that's the point you need to push harder to give birth to this black supremacy new world order. Support should be flooding through the doors. People should be, this is my moment to stand up and help and support. This is my moment to prove and show who I am as it relates to black supremacy. This Correct. is my position in showing that black supremacy's time is now. Correct. This is the time you should be willing to step forward with your support. And if you can't step forward, coming here, being here, and being on the front line, you should get every goddamn thing you have to fortify black supremacy. That's if you're serious about seeing it happening in this time. If you're serious. But you're caring about what other people think. Like the reason that it's going to happen is because of what those who are against it think about it. What does that have to do with the reason for it happening? Or the reason if it's going to happen? Because what negative people think about it, it determines whether it's going to happen. Because what the positive people are willing to do for it, and do as it, that determines if it's going to happen. 400 years of slavery, we know they're going to be naysayers. You read the Willie Lynch letter, this is nothing new. We know about all this. We know people are going to be against it and have a half-ass attitude and be half-ass and back and forth and up and down. This is nothing new. The question is, where are you? Are you in the Willie Lynch category? Are you in the feeble, weak, Negro category? Are you 1,000%? We always talking about what somebody else is doing and how weak other people are. Where are you at? Make your own examination. Are you that die hard and that serious and that austere and that devoted as a black supremacist that you're willing to put everything on the table to make sure that this succeed in this time against the forces of white supremacy? Yes, it will only succeed because you're willing to do that. You think white supremacy is working because of one person? It's working because it's supported <coughs> by other white supremacists and black devils. And if black supremacy is going to succeed and this is going to be our time. It's going to be because of you reach within yourself and step forward to give your 100% support. To put your 100% energy forward. To put your complete meditation on it. To be undistracted in your meditation on black supremacy. To be unwavering. To be solid. To be fortified in your position. That's how we know we succeed. The thousands, the, the, the masses can think what they want to think as they always have. But are you of the few that know that our time is now? That's going to make our time be now. We don't realize that even the great evils that we see in the world is only perpetuated by a few. Everybody else is following. Mm. Everybody else just doesn't have the heart to challenge and contest against that few. That's why they're running, not because they have no superior power. So we must be the few that lead the masses into the goodness of black supremacy. We have to be that few that steer and direct the world into a positive black supremacy end. destination. So we don't care what the masses think. We're only identifying who is the, who is the few that will be the signs and the symbols of this time. We expect Negroes to think how they're thinking. But how they're thinking don't make black supremacists reality. How the black supremacists think make black supremacists reality. Who are among those numbers? Who are those? Because those will partake of the boundless glory. 
of what black supremacy is. They will receive of the, bl- the boundless reward of the freedom and liberation that the black supremacists receive. Even if black supremacists change the world, if you believe in white supremacy, you will suffer. Only the black supremacists will, res- will, will partake of the boundless reward of what black supremacy has to offer. Not because it's not there for everyone. But because you people go on continuing believing in white supremacy. That's their world. And anything outside of that is suffering for them. But there will be a world of black supremacy. Irregardless. Based on us having the power to create it and manifest it and bring it forth. The white man will never rule again. <clears throat> when someone like me comes to the earth with this thought and this surety and this clarity of mind it's guaranteed that his rulership is over with the, that very birth is victory in and of itself the fact that I am here and speaking is a sign that it is over with for him and it is irreversible Correct. and we're partying into the victory. We're celebrating the victory that has happened. That's what we're doing. That's right. <laughs> and we're inviting you to party with us. Mm-hmm. We're inviting you to come and be a part of the party where we celebrate our invincibility and our effortless destruction of those who have had an opportunity and an advantage to do harm to us in the past. Teach. We are celebrating our victory We're celebrating our intelligence, our overwhelming intelligence to overcome the surmountable obstacles that the insurmountable obstacles that he would put in front of us. We invite you into that celebration. It's easy for us. It's nothing for us. This is your call. It's your time or not. For some of you all, it's going to take time to see. You all are going to have to see through the challenges that we overcome. You all will be you all will be amazed. Some of you all are going to be you you're not you're not going to be on the cutting edge of what ha- what's happening. You're going to be amazed as we continue to have timeless victory, time after time, over white supremacy. When are you going to believe? What is knowable? When are you going to accept what is un- unavoidable and inevitable? Until you do that, you will suffer from white supremacy. You getting stuck up by somebody with a gun that is not loaded. And you won't let nobody tell you that there are no bullets in the gun, so you keep giving up your money. The black supremacist is not getting stuck up no more. No. We know that the guns are not loaded. Huh? That's right. We know that. We know that the guns are empty. And ours are loaded. So we're not getting stuck up no more. Y'all complaining and being victims of being stuck up, but it's you who believe that it's bullets in the guns. Huh? You all being chased by men with no legs. You ducking from men with no arms. But you won't believe what we have to say. That's on you. We tried to tell you. Huh? We tried to tell you. You covering up your ears from a man with no voice. We're trying to tell you. And what you see we're doing, the accomplishments that we're having, is because we know that he has no legs, no arms, no voice. That the only voice to be heard in this dispensation of time is black supremacy. Black supremacy. You're self-defeated. Some people say, well, 
Do y'all plan on killing white people? And are y'all gonna kill some white people and kill this or that person? Whatever the dictates of manifesting the totality of black supremacy would have us do, we intend on doing. Huh? Whatever that is. Now you work your imagination on it. You sit and ponder that. Huh? Whatever that is that you know and do not know of, but you've pondered and have not pondered, well, if it is necessary for black supremacy, we intend on doing it with full intention. Completely focused on it. I'm take my glasses off to say that. Whatever it takes to ensure that black supremacy will be the way of this time will be victorious, we intend on doing it. Well, are y'all non-violence? Of course we believe in non-violence. We don't believe in nobody being violent to us. Huh? We are totally about non-violence against us. Huh? That's what being untruly non-violent is about. We are totally and absolutely about non-violence against us. We will not tolerate any violence against us. We are about non-violence. And we must make sure that no violence happens by any means necessary. To us. How more staunch could you be on non-violence than that? That's right. Huh? Right. There's nobody that is more pro-non-violence than us on the earth. We are complete zealous about nonviolence. We are so zealous about nonviolence, we are absolutely positive that none of it is going to happen to us. By any means necessary. We are about nonviolence. So put your guns away. That helps us with our nonviolent movement. If you put your guns away. Mm. Huh? Because mm. then we got to do less work to ensure nonviolence against ourselves. Mm. <laughs> but if you you about violence, then we got to do more work to ensure nonviolence. Huh? <laughs> you can be secure with that. You can be satisfied with that. How hard do you want us to work on our nonviolence movement? Does that mean we got to carry big shit? I don't want to work that hard if I don't have to. I don't want. I don't like carrying all this heavy ass shit. I don't want to do that. I want to travel lightly. But I'm so supportive of nonviolence and in, in agreeance with you on that that I got to do whatever is necessary to make sure it's nonviolent. Huh? How can I? Say I'm against violence. No, I'm about nonviolence. And I let you hit me upside the head. That's a contradiction. I gotta stop the violence. Huh? I must put an end to the violent ones that seek to do violence. One way or the other. I don't know. So we're about we're about nonviolence. I'm 100% about nonviolence. We chant nonviolence. Nonviolence. <laughs> and we will stop it. Nonviolence. Hmm? <laughs> we can stop all the nonviolence. We're going to stop the violence. Who has been so violent? Get Let's em. stop them. Get them. <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing the violence? Look at my criminal record. Ain't no violent, nonviolent on there. So since I have the nonviolent record, I should be the one that stopped the goddamn violence. The violent can't stop the violence. Only the nonviolent can stop the violent, right? Because the violent is already violent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got the claim record. Get him, God. So nobody is more nonviolent than me. So you ain't got to ask me that. Save it. 
I will show you how nonviolent I am based on how violent you are. I'm going to show you how much I'm against violence. You want to see how much I'm against violence? Be violent towards me. Right? That's the best way. Don't take my word for it. Be violent against me and I'll show you how, how much I'm against violence. That's the best way. So I, it, it, it would behoove you to take my, my word on how nonviolent I am. Don't see for yourself. That's one thing. You know what they say, learn by experience. That's one thing you don't want to learn. You don't want to learn how nonviolent I am from experience. Because the only way you're going to experience learning how nonviolent I am is by being violent against me and see how, see how much I'm against your goddamn violence. I'm calling on all the forces of nonviolence. If anybody is violently against black supremacy, we must stop the violence. All the forces are called into effect to stop that violence against black supremacy by any means necessary. Huh? If you're swinging a sword, I gotta cut your hands off to stop the violence. Then you can't swing it no more. And I've achieved my violence. That's right. Huh? If you shoot me and I take the gun, then you can't shoot me no more. I've stopped none violence. And if I gotta aim it back at you to sit your ass down, right? Then I've achieved none violence. Now you still. You're peaceful. Because the only thing you believe in is the gun. The only thing you believe in is weapons of destruction. That's your gods. So do we have to get your gods to make you be not violent? My whole point in saying this lecture is that I'm against, I, I, I support not violence. That's all I'm saying. That's my long way of saying I'm against not violence. I'm with non violence. This is a non violent movement. We intend to stop the violence that has been happening to our people all around the world. That's our call. That's our goal. Y'all tricked us. Y'all wanted us to be tell us to be nonviolent so we can allow so you can allow us to go upside our head and we do nothing about it. I don't even have a weapon and you saying, Are you nonviolent? I said, No, I'm nonviolent. Then you slap me upside my head. You see how silly that is? I'm sitting at the house with a spoon of cereal. You say you're not violent, yeah, and then you slap me upside my head with the while I'm eating my cereal. Why are you asking people that are not violent if they're not violent? Because those are the people that you have permission to beat the fuck out of them and nothing happen. That's like saying, Can I whoop your ass? Sure. Am I correct? You're not correct. You're not correct. Is it alright if we beat the fuck out of you and you do nothing about it? Sure. True nonviolence means we stop those that are against us. We stop those that are violent to us by any means necessary. Hey, boo -boo. That's being men and standing up. This whole perspective that black people have with white supremacy is, is, is having us be less than men. And we think that's righteous. And it's heavenly to get a boot up your ass. Huh? That's heavenly. I did the right thing. I got my teeth knocked out. I got beat half to death. I'm the right person. You let the demons have their way with you. And you are righteous. Ooh. The least you could have did is move the fuck out the way. Wow. That's the least. And when you can't move, out the way. God damn it, you attack. Huh? And if somebody gets you for a second, as soon as you catch your breath and get in the right position, you fight back. Am I right? Mm -hmm. It's reality. You fight back. Or you be bullied for the rest of your existence. 
and we have been bullied for a people. We have been bullied as a people for these types of ideas. We've allowed the white man to bully us thinking that we're going to heaven and we're some type of good people. We let our people be murdered and destroyed by these fucking crackers and these fucking devils. And we're somehow good as a people. We're, 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 we're right. We refuse to fight back. And not only do we do less than refusing to fight back, we refuse to even say what, is, what needs to happen. We, refu we can't even say the truth. We can't even say that these crackers that are in the wrong, that are killing and harming our people, need to be killed immediately. We can't say that. Our people are innocently locked up in correctional facilities for shit that they didn't even do. We make up the largest percentage of the prisons. And those with freedom cannot use their freedom to speak the truth. How dare us. How dare us. The least that we can do, given the real suffering that our people go through, while we live in our materialist comfort conformity to white supremacy, the least that we can do is speak out against the injustices of our people. We think our situation is bad. There are people that are on death row that are in jail for something that did not do. They're in the hole right now. Mm -hmm. Huh? There are people dying, starving, suffering because of white supremacy. As we speak, right now, and we cannot even speak the truth against these forces. The worst that we will endure for speaking the truth is nowhere near the suffering that people are undergoing based on the injustice. Do you hear me? The worst that can happen to us. That's not even, it's not even 0.1% of the suffering of the thousands and hundreds of thousands of lives, right? Right. That are crushed by this beast daily. Hmm? A little discomfort for us, for the truth. Suffering for somebody else. Total suffering. Total loss of relatives, loss of lives, loss of land, loss of peace, loss of security, loss of sanity, loss of hope. They cannot be replaced. And we still, we can't speak the truth. We're afraid that we're, our living condition is going to change because we speak the truth. I won't have that nice curtain that I like. You follow? I can't use that that I used to use. I can't drive that anymore. I'm not, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to not have this. I'm going to have to live like that. And even that is nowhere near the suffering. That's, that is, Blissful compared to the suffering that the innocent undergo, right? Right. Because ours is intentional and for a righteous purpose. Theirs is unintentional and due to our neglect.